Good morning, Juanita. I think I see Anthony also, which brings us to eight, I believe. There's Director Woods. Good morning. How are you, Doug? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Oh, okay, I'm trying. Good morning, everyone. I was asking Doug how he was doing. Doug, you're on. Yeah, you're on mute. He gave you the thumbs up, though. Oh, okay. Great, great, great. How are you doing, Rebecca? Oh, I got a, a sickie at home. So I have a kid who might be randomly making appearances. <laughs> so he's got COVID, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Is everyone here, MC? We're missing one person, but everyone that responded to the invitation, to the calendar invitation is here. So I'm reaching out at the moment. Okay. I don't think we have enough to start. Correct. Mm. Wow. Six. Oh, there's Anthony. Mm -hmm. Morning, Anthony. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, so, Anthony. Uh, Hear your kid is sick, Rebecca. Yep. Wish them a fast recovery. What? Wish them a quick recovery. Yeah, he uh, he's pretty miserable. He's vaccinated, but he has COVID and he's got a really high fever. So oh, he, uh, wow. I'm, I'm expecting him to come in here at any moment and want to snuggle with mom. So he's not mm. feeling well at all. I hope he feels better. You hate to yeah. see your children sick, you know? Yeah, well, and I hope too, it doesn't spread to the whole family. That's the other oh, concern. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Mm. How was your trip, MC? I know you went out of town again. I'm actually headed to get my daughter um, right after the meeting today. Really? She's, uh, okay. She's coming home. She finished. Um, she finished for the semester, so I'll be picking her up. Oh, great! Now she's where? She's up in Marquette, Michigan. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. You gonna fly or drive? Drive. Yeah. Yeah. She has. A she's lot coming of home stuff. for the summer. Oh, great! Well, you got a lot of stuff. You're gonna have to take a get right. one of those things to put on the back of your car. <laughs> Trailers.
How did she enjoy it? She enjoy her. Uh, she did. Being yeah, she. She is. Yeah, she likes it very much. She's. Great. Um. Yeah. She's learning. She's. Uh. She's finding. You know that. Uh. That. Um. That identity away from home. You know. Yeah. The, the maturity that that is required to sort of figure out the problems that you you mm -hmm. encounter in everyday life. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Figuring it all out. She's not on her own, of course, but she's uh, she's away from home. And I think that's yeah, she's she's doing well. Great. Great. Well, I guess I don't know why my video won't work. So I went I went out a couple times. I don't know what's going on. Oh, thanks for trying, Janice. It'd be like that sometimes. Mine would do all kinds of crazy things. Yeah. What'd be wrong with this? Well, you'd think after, what, two years, I'd be able to do this it would, by now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> should be an expert. It's, it's probably operator. something very simple, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. It probably is um, operator error. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I had all those kind of crazy problems. It was one problem after another when I looked like I finally That's started when you, asking. When you first started out, but I've yeah. been doing this forever. So mm. I guess I didn't need to fix my hair. <laughs> it may probably well, We're glad you're here it. anyway. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Cynthia. <laughs> Hi, How Cynthia. are you? And good. It's nice but, to see everybody. Yes, it is. Hey, Doug. Doug, are you on there? I am Doug. on there. Too. Where's your hat? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I have, that ball hit. It's over in the uh, other room. Here, let me uh, let me grab it for you. You don't have to put it on, Doug. She's just talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> still handsome. You're still handsome. Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, I'll vouch for it. Oh, Cynthia and I sent him a special hat. Yeah, let me see. Oh, me okay. And Katie, thank you for translating us. So is Dustin there? He hasn't made it yet. Dustin's here. How's that, Janice? Great. <laughs> okay. Can everybody see what his hat says? Yeah, that that's, is a that's neat. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it off here. Um yeah, I don't okay. want to mess up my hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, I do appreciate the hat. Yeah. So I wonder what our protocol is. Should we wait for like 15 minutes until we decide that we don't have quorum? I should probably look at those minutes or do we have anyone who understands or knows our procedures? Well, theoretically, we can always start. We just can't discuss any business. Mm. Could we do roll? We can. I think we just know that we won't have quorum. Um, but I guess that would, yeah, like we would start the meeting. Any who, are we, who are we missing? Well, we've reached out to all those who aren't here. Um, and Edward's yeah, done a, in the chat. Where's Steve? No, I've right, never, so. I never, I always forget to get in the chat. You all forgive me. It's not because I'm trying not to chat. I mean, we can, yeah, well, here's, here's, what, I mean, here's my suggestion. We can start, get through public comment. And then when we go into, once we get to unfinished business, we can just go into recess until we have enough people to, to go. Um, and then if we still don't have them, then at that point. But I know Steve is setting up here because he has an interview. Um, Sarah's heard from Rhonda. I heard from Aaron. And so Sarah sent her an invite to a different email address. 
And um, let's see, it says Rhonda, Aaron, Sue. Who else are we missing? Richard, I thought was going to be here. No, Richard yes. was going to be late. Uh, he did Rich, tell me he was going to be late. He had and where's an Brittany? It's Brittany. And here. I sent a note to Brittany. Well, let's do what Dustin said, and maybe Richard will oh, be here. Oh, you guys, then. we're live. Yeah. We are. Are we? We are. Oh, um, okay. Can we can we start without being able to adopt the agenda? Because we can't adopt an agenda. It's technically not business, though. Um, but that's a very valid point. I didn't think we could meet if we don't have quorum. Meet meaning hold a meeting. I thought. Yeah, we can't. Also, well, I don't think we can. Is Mike on? Can Mike Brady advise? I thought I saw him on there. I see him. He's muted. He doesn't like us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, if you're able, um, and I know we're not in session, but if you're able to help us, that'd be great. Forgive me, I've been speaking. I, I just realized I was muted. Um, <laughs> so saying I was pulling up the rules of procedure for the commission. Let's say it, it is possible under the Open Meetings Act, just for whatever, you know, that's worth not binding on this commission, of course, at this point, um, for public bodies to, to, you know, to meet and to not deliberate or take action. Um, and, and so, you know, that's what some public bodies would do if they don't have their sub quorum um, and they could still do the, you know, go into public comment. But the, the, I guess the question is, is can we, can we still adopt the agenda at that particular, because we do that before public comment, is that, would, be, would that be okay? I mean, technically, it seems like that that is an action. Um, okay. So, but I wouldn't sweat that if, if if folks wanted to start out of respect for the people who might be. And I, and I actually don't know if anyone is in for public comment. But out of respect for the individuals of the public who had signed up, um, that is something that is, you know, permissible um, mm -hmm. again under normal operation of the Open Meetings Act. And so, you know, you could just then adopt the agenda afterwards. Doesn't matter anymore. We got Steve, though. <laughs> Thank Yay! you, Mr. Ray. Hey. Great. As chair of the commission, I call this meeting of the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission to order at 10, 12 a.m. This Zoom webinar is live streamed on YouTube on the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission YouTube channel for anyone in the public watching who would prefer to watch via a different platform that they are currently using. Please visit our social media at redistricting MI. Our live stream today includes closed captioning. Closed captioning, ASL interpretation and Spanish, Arabic and Bengali translation services will be provided for effective participation in this meeting. Email us at redistricting at michigan.gov for additional viewing options or details on accessing language translation services for this meeting. People with disabilities needing other specific accommodations should also contact redistricting at michigan.gov. This meeting is being recorded and will be available at www.michigan.gov forward slash MICRC for viewing at a later date. This meeting is also being transcribed and those closed caption transcripts will be made available and posted on the michigan.gov forward slash MICRC website. Along with written public comment submissions. There is also a public comment portal that may be accessed by visiting michigan.gov forward slash MICRC. This portal can be utilized to post maps and comments, which can be viewed by both the commission and the public. Members of the media who may have questions before, during, or after the meeting should direct those questions to Edward Woods III, Executive Director for the Commission at WoodsE3 at Michigan.gov or 517-331-6309. For the public watching and the public record, I will turn to Department of State staff to take note of the commission present. Good morning, commissioners. Please stay present when I call your name because we are all attending today's meeting remotely. Please also disclose where you are attending remotely from by stating the city, township, or county you are attending from. I'll call on commissioners in alphabetical order, starting with Doug Clark. Present, and I am attending this uh, meeting remotely from uh, Huntington Beach, California. Juanita Curry. Present, and I'm attending remotely from Detroit, Michigan. Anthony Ede. 
Good morning, present and remotely attending from Detroit, Michigan. Brittany Kellum. Rhonda Lang. Steve Lett. Uh, present and I am attending remotely from Hazlitt, Michigan. It's too cold and there's too much snow. <laughs> really? Wow. Cynthia Orton. Present attending remotely from Battle Creek, Michigan. MC Rothhorn. Present and attending from sunny and warm Lansing, Michigan. Great. Rebecca Satella. Present attending remotely from Wayne County, Michigan. Janice Follett. Present attending from Highland Township, Michigan. Aaron Wagner. Richard Weiss. Justin Witches. Present attending remotely from Howell, Michigan. Nine commissioners are present and there is a quorum. And I'll just remind commissioners before we move on that because we just need a quorum. If you have to step away, that means we would lose a quorum. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Reinhardt. As a reminder to the public watching, you can view the agenda at www.michigan.gov forward slash MICRC. I would now entertain a motion to approve the meeting agenda. So move. Okay. Uh, first, or the moved by Commissioner Lett. Second. Second by Commissioner Witches. Is there any discussion or debate on the motion? Hearing and seeing none, uh, it is moved and seconded in the agenda that the agenda be adopted. All in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 All opposed, raise your hand and say nay. The ayes have it, and the meeting agenda is adopted. Without objection, we will begin the public comment pertaining to the agenda topics portion of our meeting. Hearing no objection, except I do see a hand. Janice, is that your hand for the vote? Okay. Hearing no objection, we will now proceed with public comment. Thank you for your patience, those have been waiting. I will call your name. Individuals who have signed up and indicated they would like to provide live remote public commentary to the commission will now be allowed to do so. I will call your name and our staff will unmute you. If you're on a computer, you will be prompted by the Zoom app to unmute your microphone and speak. I'm getting feedback, is anybody else? Okay, it looks like it's resolved. If you're on the phone, a voice will say that the host wants you to speak and prompt you to press star six to unmute. I will call on you by your name. Um, also, please note that if you experience technical or audio issues, if we do not hear from you for three to five seconds, we will move on to the next person in line and then return to you after they are done speaking. If your audio still does not work, you can email redistricting at michigan.gov and we will help you troubleshoot so you can participate during the next public comment period at a later meeting. You'll have two minutes to address the commission. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the timer. First in line to provide public comment, is number one, Anthony Scannell. Hi, good morning, MICRC. I'm glad you were able to meet, you know, that would have been a real bummer. Um, you know, and I'm glad you're able to get it going, even if you weren't sure there would be a quorum, you know, for to quote Mr. Brady, out of respect for the public commenters who showed up, but, uh, why change a horse midstream? Uh, and on that note, uh, the, the, there's a commissioner last week who, uh, as, as right as I was getting up to speak, uh, I noticed I was watching the replay. He, he mouthed, oh boy, as I was getting up to speak. That's pretty, I don't know. I don't even have time for that. He's ridiculous. Uh, I'm still waiting to see your explanatory reports and they're explanatory for the constitution. So I don't understand how you're going to let your staff explain how you came to your decisions and then you're just going to read it and approve it. Uh, maybe that's today, maybe that's next week, two weeks from now, but how are you going to let anyone else on your staff explain your decision-making process? That's what the constitution says. I don't know. And uh, I was trying to watch your house appropriation subcommittee thing the other day, but the freaking Michigan legislator, they couldn't get their website, their internet stream together. I couldn't watch the damn thing, but so I'd love to know how that goes. If you could give us an update and uh, 
lessons learned. I haven't gotten the lessons learned yet, but um, my biggest lesson learned is about the software for mapping. It's, um, you know, you, you made the districtor site available for us, the public, and that was really cool. That was great. But you guys were using some other software and there was no compatibility. So there was no ability to examine, recreate public ideas. So we just had to go on your word the whole time that you were looking at stuff on the public for a public uh, comment portal and that you were incorporating it and analyzing it, interpreting it. But we never actually saw you do that during a live meeting. The only map you looked at during a meeting from the outside was mine, not anyone else's. And mine wasn't the best. I'll give you that. So I, I don't know. The software was a big problem with your commission. And Thank you for addressing the commission, Mr. Scannell. Next in line is James Gallant. Hello, James Gallant, Marquette County Suicide Prevention Coalition. These are my opinions. And uh, yes, it, it's glad that I'm, I'm glad you had somebody to refer to. And now that we have Mike Brady is now the parliamentarian, and that's good. We have a lawyer who is a parliamentarian who so now have the professional code of conduct and ethical standards of an attorney. See, we're, we're supposed to have the secretary of state here, and she's an attorney. We have no secretary today. You see, I think the biggest lesson here learned is that you folks are trying to change the rules. You have people behind you. I don't think you people really understand how it's working because none of this work came from the commission, okay? You have to make the motion first and then direct your staff to come up with a policy or a, a recommendation, and you never did that. They just came up with them, remember? Everybody just shows up, and like, like the, uh, the prior speaker said, I was your staff going to explain it now because you folks didn't do it. You have to explain what they did. See, that's the problem here. And I see we still got problems with the rules and you don't really know what the rules are. And, and this chair doesn't, and the vice chair, nobody does. And I see at the Republican convention, they did the same thing. They had a problem with voting. And that's because uh, it's not really set. I mean, you folks have made these sidebar agreements that, that you're going to do something else other than follow the rules. And I think that's the biggest problem here that we have is that, that the rules that, that, you know, in society, that's what's break down in our society. And I believe that that is what's increasing the risk of suicide uh, risk in our communities is the the stress that you people go through having to discuss issues when you don't even know what you're going to vote on next and it changes midstream and the bullying going on it, it's 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 wrong and 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 i do want to thank you for the clear example of what's wrong with all of this and uh we'll be getting with the uh, the supreme court and the uh, the fine with them and our case in the controversy is the rules of procedure and that you didn't acknowledge and accept the prior iteration the the commission on legislative apportionment they had rules that they i just talked to the clerks uh, clerks of the house office yesterday about your hearing that you had and, and good thing they didn't just write you a check that there's going to be more hearings and we need to get with them thank you for addressing the commission mr gallant uh, next in line is sonia patrick that participant is not present thank you ms reinhardt so that concludes our public comment However, I would like to mention that all emailed and mailed public comments are provided to the commission before each meeting. Commissioners also regularly review the public comment portal on our michigan.gov forward slash MICRC website. We appreciate everyone who offers public comment in whatever way you choose and invite you to keep sharing your thoughts, especially if you'd like to share ways that the MICRC processes or procedures have been good or could be more effective. Um, we will move on to next. Uh, next to unfinished business, but I would like to hand it over to my vice chair, um, Commissioner Witches, to facilitate the rest of the meeting. Is that okay? Oh, sure, why not? <clears throat> Thank you. Um, let me get my bearing straight here for a second. All right, uh, well, next on our agenda is unfinished business, uh, agenda item 5A, which is the latest response to public record requests and procedures and guidelines. Without objection, I will ask Executive Director Woods to present this item. Mr. Chair, apologies yes, for the interruption. I just wanted to note that Commissioner Wagner has joined the meeting at 10.23 a.m. Does she need to state where she is attending from? Yes, Commissioner Wagner, could you let us know where you're attending remotely from? I'm attending remotely from Charlotte, Michigan. Thank you. Welcome. Good morning. Okay, uh, without, uh, with hearing no objection, uh, please proceed, Mr. Woods. Thank you, um, Vice Chair Witches, appreciate that. Is everyone able to see my screen? If you could just nod your head, that would be helpful if you can see the screen, great. 
Um, our item for today, the unfinished business came from Commissioner um, Zatella um, with regards to the public records request. The notice of change was on April 14th, 2022. And today we are presenting it for approval. Um, if you go to the document, um, section K, appeals of fees and disclosure determination. This is more a change that um, change her to there in line two. And then um, add section L, posting of records. Once the requester obtains their public record, the MICRC's public record coordinator will facilitate posting that public record to be accessible freely to the public from the MICRC's website. Um, the recommended action is to approve revel revelation, approve resolution 2002-03-15. I'll move that. Motion made, motion made by <laughs> Commissioner Rothhorn, seconded by Commissioner Zatella. Is there any uh, debate or discussion on the motion? Hold on, I got some sirens going by. Give me one second. Richard just joined too, by the way. <laughs> Commissioner Weiss, uh, for the record, I'm noticing or noting that you've joined the meeting at 1025. Can you let us know where you're attending remotely from? Yes, attending remotely from Saginaw Township, Saginaw, Michigan. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, Seeing no uh, further discussion, let's vote on the motion to approve resolution 2022.03.15. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 I'm sorry, the ayes have it and the motion is approved. Do you want to count the nays? I, I don't know if we. Oh, did I? Uh, was I muted? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. All opposed, raise your hand and say nay. Okay. Motion carries. Eyes have it. Next on our agenda is unfinished business agenda 5B, uh, process for canceling a meeting. Without objection, I will ask Executive Director Woods to present this particular item. Seeing no objection, please proceed, Mr. Woods. Thank you. Are you able to see my screen? Perfect. This is resolution 2022-03-16. Proposed amendments to the rules of procedure. Notice of change took place on April 14th, 2022. Presented for approval on April 28, 2022. And here are the changes. Um, we're crossing out section 5.4, um, which states cancellation of meetings. If any meeting or public hearing of the commission must be canceled, a notice of cancellation shall be posted on the commission website as soon as practicable prior to the council meeting or public hearing. The recommended change will go to this. Cancellation of meetings. The commission may cancel the meeting or public hearing by majority vote of the commission during a meeting or by the chairperson, vice chairperson, or the executive director. If any meeting or public hearing of the commission must be canceled, a notice of cancellation shall be posted on the commission website. The action is to recommend approval for resolution 2022.03.16. Any, okay, any other discussion, comment, uh, Commissioner Zatella? Uh, I make a motion to adopt resolution 20, 22.03.16, which is the proposed amendments to the rules of procedure with respect to cancellation of meetings. I'll second that. Okay. So we got a motion made by uh, commissioners to tell a seconded by Commissioner Orton to approve resolution 2022.03.16. Is there any debate or discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and vote. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 All opposed, uh, raise your hand and say nay. Ayes have it unanimously. Motion carries. All right, we'll move on to new business. So next on our agenda is the new business agenda item 6A, House Subcommittee on Appropriations. Without objection, I will ask Executive Director Woods to present at this time. Hearing no objections, please proceed, Mr. Woods. Thank you. 
You're able to see my screen? Perfect. Um, the Constitution states, the commission shall have legal standing to prosecute an action regarding the adequacy of resources provided for the operation of the commission and to defend any action regarding an adopted plan. The commission shall inform the legislature if the commission determines that funds or other resources provided for operation of the commission are not adequate. The legislature shall provide adequate funding to allow the commission to defend any action regarding an adopted plan. As you know, our process was a letter was sent on March 24th via email to notify the legislature of our um, funding shortage, about 1.1 million um, in the email. We were um, contacted by Davis Grimm, um, who is the policy advisor for the subcommittee and testimony was scheduled for April 26th. We provided an email to the subcommittee members to see if they had any questions or feedback or if they wanted a meeting. Um, no one took us up on that offer. Um, Commissioner MC Rothhorn, our chairperson, and I presented before the committee on the 26th. Um, there was an email provided that was followed up on with Dr. Hanley's report and the mapping process and procedures. And we're also staying in contact with David Graham, who's the point person um, for this committee. Um, what I do want to do is just kind of get guidance and direction from the commission um, as it relates to um, next steps. Um, another thing that we did do, and I'd also need to note, is that we did meet with the um, state budget office, you know, prior to the meeting in terms of preparation. And also would like to thank the commissioners that provided feedback, consultation, and tips and wit and wisdom in terms of presenting before the House committee. It was greatly appreciated and definitely wanna give a round of applause to our chairperson who is cool as the other side of the pillow in the words of Stuart Scott, who used to be with ESPN and just um, thank him as well for being there. And just wanna make sure that I'm clear as to the direction the commission um, wants me to follow at this time. My, my question is, is when will we know when it's approved or not, I suppose. Um, you know, uh, Mr. Grimm didn't kind of give us, he kind of outlined the process. It might go through a supplemental. They don't know if they're gonna call us back um, in the Detroit News article. There was, they might have some more questions. You know, we did provide the information that was requested, but as of right now, we haven't heard, um, heard anything um, with regards to that at this point. Um, I guess my question should be like, for example, should we alert our legal counsel with regards to, you know, our budget shortfall so that they're aware, you know, what are the, what does the commission want to direct me to do in well, terms of um, moving forward? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on your toes there. Um, what, um, I guess they, but they don't really have a choice, right? Like it's, it's constitutionally mandated that they provide us funding. So isn't the whole thing of us getting called back kind of a waste of time? Um, and how can I say they can call us back? Let me just be clear. Um, I think the constitution is clear. Um, I know Mr. Brady is here and our legal counsel, but um, I don't know what they will do, to be honest with you, um, Vice Chair Witches, but um, that is an option. And so I've just wanted to say, do you, you know, should we formally alert our legal counsel, you know, to the situation, you know, what steps should we take, you know, as a commission in an open and transparent manner so that I'm not getting ahead of myself, but, um, you know, following the direction. So really wanted to have a discussion as to, you know, how the commission would like to me to proceed. Commissioner Clark. Yeah, I, it's it's difficult for us because we don't know what how long it's going to last and what the exact costs are. What I would recommend is gathering all of the un, unknown invoices at this point in time, um, what the costs are in those, and um, then from that, um, that gives us an idea of what potential or what what previous uh, legal costs were. And from there, we can extrapolate, extrapolate what a average monthly cost has been for us. And that monthly, that average monthly cost is, I think, would be our best projection forward on what we can expect as legal costs. So I would, I would suggest that that would be one approach. 
Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Rock. I'll just second that because it, it does seem like the, the hardest part for us, uh, I'll second what Doug just said, because I think we need to understand our cash flow at this point. Right, we don't know when we're going to run out, but that seems to be the the greatest danger um, in and and not knowing. And so, uh, yeah, how Director Woods can actually prioritize the bills that we have or not? Yeah, what which ones do we pay? Which ones don't we pay? Um, that feels like what the um, the the uncertainty is. So uh, having that, what uh, Commissioner Clark suggested, makes a lot of sense to me. My only concern is that. Is the subcommittee going to purposefully delay our funding? That's that's just my concern. Are they going to continue to call us back? Are they going to continue to ask for things before they, in my opinion, vote to do what they're constitutionally mandated to do, which is fund the MICRC? But that's, again, my opinion. Uh, Commissioner Clark and then Commissioner Zatella. I think one of the other items that we got to be aware of is what the legislature's schedule is going to be for uh, for the summer, particularly with elections coming up. I'm sure they're going to um, be in their um, home areas, uh, you know, campaigning and so forth. So I, I think we've got limited access to them at certain points in time so that the quicker we can um, get some estimates to them and, and even even a proposal of what we think we're going to need. Uh, I think we're better off. Commissioner Zatello? Yeah, I was just going to second um, what what Commissioner Clark was saying is that, you know, they're just doing their due diligence. And I think um, the more cooperative we are and the, and the more responsive we are, um, the quicker it will allow them to make decisions. And I think that if they ask us for additional information, we just provide it in good faith and, and count on them to do their job, which is um, handling appropriations. So I just think um, cooperation is, is the right way to go here and prompt cooperation as well. Get them the information they're requesting as soon as possible. And if they call us back for more questions, then we go back for more questions. I agree. Any other thoughts, ideas? All right. Okay. Anthony's got uh, his hand up. I'm sorry. Oh, Anthony, uh, yeah. Commissioner Ede, I'm sorry. It's not really uh, advice on what to do next, but I just wanted to take a moment to thank uh, Edward and MC for, you know, going in the future and, uh, and doing it in such a professional fashion. Um, yeah, a lot of us watched it and I thought that, uh, you know, there were some unfair questions, but y'all held your own and uh, we're very respectful and did a did a great job on our behalf. So thank you. Yeah, I was I was honored to watch you two do your work. It was absolutely fantastic in my eyes. You guys did great. So I second yeah, what Anthony says. Any other uh, commissioners to tell us? Yeah, so one just quick comment. Um, I know Anthony Scannell had made a comment about the, the live stream for that particular appropriations committee not being viewable. They did fix it. Um, and it is, uh, you know, the first hour, I believe, is where they were having problems. But when the, when the MICRC actually went on, the video was fixed. And so if you do go to that House Appropriations Committee website and look at the tape that's out there and go to about an hour in, um, you, he will be able to actually watch the hearing um, at that point. And the video was clear um, and the problem was fixed. All right. Seeing no further discussion, we'll move on to our next agenda item, which is item 6B, Office of the Auditor General. Um, without objection, I will ask Executive Director Woods to present this item. Hearing no objection, please proceed, Mr. Woods. Thank you, Commissioner Witches. Office of Auditor General, um, what we have is um, we did meet with them. Um, I said I met with them. We have an orientation. We, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me get my video straight. Good. We have orientation meetings set up for next week um, with regards to the audit and the process and what's going to take place. 
Um, usually when you have an audit, you would like to have a liaison for transparency and integrity purposes directly from the governance board. And um, Commissioner Rothhorn has a recommendation um, for an appointment. So I was gonna suggest, we've done such a nice job of sharing the, 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 the seats of, um, yeah, representation. I don't think we should have the chair, the vice chair do that. I think um, we've had a successful liaison situation with a legal, uh, with Steve. And so I was gonna hope, uh, because I think Janice has, uh, Janice Commissioner Vallette has a, a background with um, regards to auditing. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that she will accept the nomination and maybe even share a little bit of what I uh, think is the, the an accurate representation that you have about auditing background, Commissioner Vallette. Oh yeah, and sorry, Commissioner Witches, go ahead. Um, I was I would add to that, given the due diligence that uh, Commissioner Clark has done uh, while looking at the budgets throughout every single meeting that we've had when we had to talk about the budgets. If he were to uh, accept, I would like to potentially see him on the. Uh, committee as well. Uh, so we have basically three individuals, which is what we've been doing for the most part anyway. Um, but I, I mean, that's, that's up to him. If he says no, then we won't have to put him on in, in, the, in the motion. It's completely up to, up to Commissioner Clark. Commissioner Clark. Yeah, let, let me comment on that. Um, I mean, I'd be happy to do whatever, you know, the commission asked me to do. But um, in this instance, I think the work that Steve's done as a liaison with the legal people is a more effective approach than putting together a three-person committee or three-person subcommittee. If we have a three-person subcommittee, it's gonna to have to be um, broadcast and online as we've done before. If we have a liaison, that individual can work with the auditor directly and offline and then come back and report to the commission. And I think at this point in time, since we've got the maps done, this is more of an administrative type of thing that we should take that approach instead. And I, and I would second the motion to have Janice if she accepts to do that. Thank you. And thank you, Commissioner Clark. Um, that's exactly what we were asking for was a liaison um, structure as um, our chair articulated in the beginning of, of his appointment. Commissioner Vallette. Um, well, I just, um, Edward said he thought he, that maybe I should comment on what I did when I was working for the bank. And I was policy procedure audits. I audited, you know, the vault and the tellers. It's totally different from what you're asking me to do, but I would be happy to, to attend the meetings and report back um, anything that you know I found out there. So I'm not really sure what it would entail, but I guess it's going to the meetings and just reporting and then letting Edward know if they were requesting anything. So would you would you want to be part of the team with uh, Commissioner Lett? There's no team, Commissioner Witches. I'm going to be very clear. This is a liaison position. Commissioner Lett is a legal liaison representative to the commission. Commissioner Vallette would be an audit liaison representative to the commission. I would be a part of that, but for the governance structure and transparency when it comes to audit, it is a custom that you would have a, me a member from the governing body, which is the commission, to be a liaison. So I want to make sure we're very clear that we're not committing, we're not creating a subcommittee or another committee. That's not what's being asked. What's being asked is to have an appointment from this governing body, the commission, to work with myself and the um, auditors um, to complete the audit from October 1st, 2020 to March 31st, 2022. So we'll just be really, really clear about that because I don't want any ambiguity or thinking this is emerging with the legal liaison. These are two separate positions. Commissioner Zatello. Did we get a motion or in a second at this point? I'm not clear. I, I feel like I lost that in the conversation. We got no, one. 
Yeah. You know, yes, we have I, Commissioner I, Rothhorn made the motion and Commissioner Clark made the second. Okay. I'm sorry, I must have missed that. Um, can you please restate the uh, the motion, Commissioner Rothhorn? Sure. Um, yeah. There's a, a, a resolution 2022-03.17, be it resolved that the Michigan Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission appoints Commissioner Janice Follett as the liaison for the commission to the Office of Auditor General. Okay, I understand it now. And that was seconded by Commissioner Clark. Perfect. All right, is there any discussion or debate on the motion for uh, resolution 2022.03.17? Seeing none, let's go ahead and vote. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 All opposed, please raise your hand and say nay. I have it, motion is adopted unanimously. That concludes uh, new business. We'll move on to the approval of minutes. Uh, we have to approve minutes from the April 28th meeting held via Zoom. These draft um, minutes have- But that's gonna, we have no I minutes. asked for that to be removed. Um, so oh, we'll do that at I'm the sorry, next today meeting. is April 28th. Right, so. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so uh, there are no minutes to be approved? Correct. Perfect. Move on to staff reports. Um, I believe we have one from Director Woods. Uh, if you Great. would like to please give your report, go ahead. Thank you. Let me um, set up this video that I like to do. So let me come out of um, the PowerPoint because I'll need to come back to it. But and then I can get to the video. Lovely video. So I um, go ahead and continue with your report, but I also just want to extend all my gratitude to everybody who um, showed up, accepted awards, and uh, I do want to thank everyone personally uh, for all the support that uh, every uh, group has given us throughout the last two years. Anything else, Director Woods? 
Can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. I had to bring back up the PowerPoint, so just a second. All right, are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Perfect, thank you. Okay, just some highlights. Um, I know with regards to lessons learned, report and video, um, I know they have a few more videos to do. I know they're doing a few today um, with regards to the video. And then we'll have, we should have the draft of the report next month, as well as the video next month as well. Um, we did have commission recognition in Lansing for those that were not able to make it to Detroit. Want to thank um, commissioners, our chair, um, MC Rothhorn and our vice chair, Dustin Witches for being there. Um, it was great just to say thank you in person and to do that, um, we did that at Sweet Encounter Bakery um, in the Old Naps building at the corner of Washtenaw and um, Washington. And just really wanna you know, just give a shout out to, to our Legislative Services Bureau family, our MDOS family, and DTMB in particular for all the outstanding work that they have done to ensure that we were able to function and to uh, carry out and fulfill our mission. Um, this week I did a presentation the Area Agency on Aging on um, this Tuesday morning, just more or less of an update. And then yesterday we had the Michigan Society of Association Executives Public Policy. Um, we did a presentation along with Commissioner Zatella and joining us on the panel talking about the implications of redistricting was also Kyle Malin from MERS, Ben Solis from Gonware and Representative Tanisha Yancey was a part of that panel. And then last but not least, we've been working on trying to get maps. There's been a lot of questions um, with regards to getting the map so people know what the new maps look like. And so we were working with our contractor to kind of identify a solution. And I would like to thank um, Commissioners Orton, um, Witches and Rothhorn for their help. And we should have these new maps ne um, next week and they will look like this. Um, they will have each of the districts, the congressional districts, the House districts, the state Senate districts, um, and they'll do it by counties. And this is an example by how it will look like county for Congressional District 1. And then I believe for Congressional District 13, this is a look like how it will look like for townships. Um, you will be able to print this on a ledger sheet, 11 by 17. And depending on whether or not your printer will be able to convert um, it can also come out on an eight and a half by 11. So this is some of the things that we've been working on. There's been a demand for it for quite some time. And just really want to thank the commissioners for their support in terms of um, ensuring making that happen, because that was a challenge. Let me do that. Okay. Stop sharing all together. All right, that ends my report. If there's any questions or comments, um, I can take them at this time. But I um, want to thank the commission for the support. It's been a very busy two weeks. I'm getting stuff going, and but a rewarding two weeks in terms of what we were able to do. And um, thank you for all your support and encouragement um, throughout the process. Any questions? All right, thank you, Mr. Woods. Um, we'll move on to our legal liaison report, which I do believe we have a report. Um, so without objection, I will ask Commissioner Lett to provide his report. Team none, please proceed, uh, Commissioner Lett. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm really glad to be back in Michigan. Um, Edward and I met with uh, Nate and David Fink on Tuesday, the 26th, and uh, basically we talked about <clears throat> a couple of things. Uh, I'll do the easy one first, the AG file uh, lawsuit uh, in the Western District uh, Federal Court. Uh, a response uh, will be due. Uh, and the Baker Hostetler will be filing that response. You, of course, will get a 
copy of it. The um, rest of the hour, and we spent about an hour uh, talking about uh, how do we continue if we do continue, when do we uh, expire, when, uh, how do, how is a vacancy provision uh, come into play, and what does a census cycle mean? Now, having raised all those questions, the uh, answers at the end of the day was, uh, we'll come back and talk about it some more because we didn't figure out what they were. Uh, <clears throat> I expressed uh, to uh, the attorneys that um, having uh, a, quote, new commission picked if uh, there's a lawsuit filed after all the other lawsuits are uh, resolved and we are, uh, go out of business, uh, to have 13 new people come in would be, uh, in a technical legal term, crazy. The, uh, the, the learning curve, as we all know, is uh, substantial. Uh, and uh, it was my opinion, and I expressed it, that uh, pursuant to the Constitution, and, and there was, uh, I'll, I'll say there is no agreement on how this is going to work. But uh, it was uh, my opinion, and I expressed it, that uh, if, if there is a court challenge after all of the other ones are done and, and we have expired, then uh, a new challenge uh, coming along and the court deciding that new maps had to be drawn or changes had to be made, uh, it's my opinion and still is that uh, that would be up to the us, the commission that made them. Uh, I, I think that's clear. I know that um, Mike may have a, a different take on that. And uh, I know that Fink had uh, a different take on, on them, but uh, to say that there's no consensus at the present time it would be uh, an understatement. We really didn't talk about anything that we haven't already talked about here, talking about how uh, we might or might not continue, what does all of this mean? At some point in time, uh, we'll have to decide what way we're gonna go and uh, we'll bring it back and, and we'll discuss it and see uh, see where we're at. So that uh, that seems to be the um, main topic of discussion uh, right now besides the uh, finances with the, the state paying the, the bills. So I don't know if Mike wants to add anything. Mike was, was not there, but I know Mike had talked uh, with uh, Fink and uh, perhaps with uh, Baker Hostetler, but uh, I think that summarizes where our discussion went and we're gonna meet again in uh, two, three weeks and, and see, where we're, see where we go. <clears throat> um, I, what was the, uh, the idea of issuing a motion to stop our pay on after X amount of days and then go into a perpetual recess? brought up because I still think that is going to be the easiest way to go about doing this so we're not actually disbanded. Well we didn't we didn't talk about we didn't talk about a uh, as you say perpetual recess uh, certainly and we really didn't talk about pay that much other than if all of the lawsuits are resolved uh, it'd be pretty hard for us to say that we're going to continue to be paid so that wasn't much of a topic of discussion. Uh, really, the discussion was around uh, what does what does expire mean? Uh, are we able to bring ourselves back, or is the Secretary of State able to bring ourselves back? If there is a lawsuit filed after all of the rest are resolved, who's going to defend it? Because if we're not in business anymore, we're not around. Uh, so those are all the uh, various issues that uh, we're we're looking at. Like I say, it's it's nothing that we, as this commission, haven't haven't talked about in prior sessions. Commissioner Zatella, 
And I'm just wondering if there was any discussion about when these lawsuits that are currently pending in West Michigan might end, because it seems like we're just at the beginning of them and probably waiting for scheduling orders. Um, I'm just wondering if, if the thought from the lawyers is that these might end sooner rather than later versus dragging out for another year or so. No, there was no discussion about that at all. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Curry. Yes, <clears throat> I was wondering, uh, can we refer to what the other states um, have done, the commissioners? and kind of follow their lead? Or do we just have to make our, you know, discuss that just with our state commission? Well, we certainly, I mean, we can look at anybody we want to. That doesn't mean that their procedures are gonna mesh with our procedures. Oh, okay. Um, I, and and I, I don't know that the attorneys have done that. I, that wasn't, wasn't a question that came up Tuesday. Um, so the answer is, yeah, we could go look and see what they're doing. Oh, okay. We did discuss that, uh, perhaps, uh, after having gone through this process, we could probably write a better constitutional amendment, but that ain't going to happen either. Okay. Any other questions for commissioner Lett? good because I don't have any other answers. <laughs> well, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Um, at this point, we'll move on to uh, Michigan Department of State updates. Without objection, I will ask Mike Brady or Sarah Reinhardt from the Michigan Department of State if they have an update. Hearing no objection, please proceed, Mr. Brady. Hi, commissioners. Just a reminder that if you're going to be absent or tardy to a meeting, um, to notify either myself as secretary or your executive director, Wood, uh, Edward Woods, um, so that we may uh, establish if there will be a quorum present for the meeting. Um, you just passed a uh, rules of procedure to allow the posting of a cancellation notice. Um, so if we can determine beforehand that there will not be a quorum present for a meeting, we're able to cancel that in advance of the meeting. Um, if you can just either send an email or send us a, a text, any kind of notification to let us know would be great. Thanks so much. That's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Reinhardt. Apologies. Um, and uh, Mike, Mr. Brady, anything from you? We continue to process the FOIA request. Um, I, I know that the commission voted today to, uh, consistent with the discussion last at the last meeting, um, to proactively post any documents produced in a FOIA. Um, we're working through that. Uh, we began working through that just on some of the logistics issues ahead of today's vote. Um, uh, I would say one of the kind of key logistics issues is whether it's actually posted on the commission's website or posted on the public comment portal, given the size of some of the documents themselves. And one of uh, the public comment portal um, lends itself more readily to the uh, additional you know, size and capacity of posting significant size documents. Either way, um, we believe it's consistent with the language that the commission adopted today that calls for documents to be you know, proactively posted and made available to the public. So we'll continue to have more updates on that. Um, also, in kind of as, as a reminder from the discussion at the last meeting, uh, I guess just you know, managing expectations in terms of um, you know, the ability once we get it up and running to do that moving forward versus what will take a little bit of time to go back into the, you know, into the last year and identify the different records and kind of post that. Um, we, we understand that the commission wants to do all of the above um, and fully support that. And it'll just take some time to kind of phase that fully in. So um, I think that's the main update. I think, uh, you know, we've certainly been in conversations with, um, you know, a staff level with Director Woods and, and the like, you know, looking ahead to a time where it doesn't make sense, which frankly, like might be now, but doesn't make sense for the commission to meet twice a month. Um, I think the, the amended language today allowing for a clear path forward for um, the canceling of meetings um, is you know certainly an important step frankly for just like basic operations for the, for the commission um, and so you know can put that out there on your radar uh, don't have a proposal here because ultimately you know we truly 
you know, as the non-voting secretary of the commission, are here to support the commission's work. Um, just noting, you know, with today's, like, started a little bit late and whatever else, so we're kind of clocking it on under an hour, and ultimately just a question, um, which is truly just a question, but a question of whether that's, you know, better to do that versus to have a single meeting, um, given just the reality of what the, the commission is doing, a single meeting a month, um, given the reality of the current workload for the commission, uh, and even just the status of the lawsuits and the like. So um, look forward to that conversation developing, you know, further as the commission proceeds into this, you know, I don't even know if it's even a new phase at this point, but it continues to proceed in, in, the, in the current phase of work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brady. Oh, any uh, questions for either uh, Ms. Reinhardt or Mr. Brady from anybody? All righty. Moving on, uh, correspondence received in advance of our meeting today was provided along with the written public comments to the commissioners in our meeting materials. Are there any agenda items that the commissioners would like to have added to future agendas? Commissioner Curry. Um, I'd like to address this to Edward Woods, our uh, executive director. Are we still working on a documentary for the commissioners? Um, we're working on a lessons learned report and video not a mm -hmm. documentary, but yes. Okay. And uh, uh, the report should come out next month and the video okay. should come out next month. They're finishing up some things right now um, mm -hmm. with regards to that. And um, they'll be released to the commission um, next month. Okay. Is it going to be in the form of a, a booklet or a video or just? It'll be both. It'll be a, okay. a, re a written report and a video. Okay. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Clark. Uh, yes, I'd like to have an item added to future agendas. Uh, like we do with Steve as liaison for the legal work, I'd like to have um, Janice added as the uh, liaison for the audit and have her speak each week or each meeting. All right. Okay, perfect. Anybody else? Um, are there any announcements? Yes, um, my daughter is um, graduating from high school and it's gonna be a little difficult with family coming in um, for me to meet on May 26th. So I was hoping if it's okay with the commission that we look to cancel that meeting on the 26th of May, her graduation activities start that day. And it would just be helpful to, for my family if I could help out and be supportive um, you know, for that entire weekend. Clark. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, appropriate, not only for that, but it's uh, backs up to Memorial Day weekend, uh, where all of us may have some family obligations. So I, I think that's a, a good approach to, to maybe cancel it or reschedule it. And so I would like to suggest canceling the meeting. And then if we need a special meeting, we can call it. But, you know, just for the book's sake, we just cancel that meeting on May 26th um, would be my um, recommendation. And we, according to our new policy, by a simple majority vote, you all can do that today. Commissioner Lett. Uh, that doesn't have anything to do with what you're talking about. Come back to me. Okay. Well, uh, I guess I'll entertain a motion to cancel the, the meeting in question on the uh, 26th. So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Lett, seconded by Commissioner Clark. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. Commissioner aye. Curry had her hand raised for discussion. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Curry. No, I was just going to say, uh, so there will be no meeting in May. Is that correct? There won't be a meeting on May 26th. I know. We have a scheduled meeting May 12th, virtual. All right. I apologize, Commissioner Curry. Uh, any other um, discussion on the motion? All right, let's go ahead and vote again. Um, all in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 
All opposed, raise your hand, say nay. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry, did someone say nay? No, I'm just. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <That's what you laughs> said. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Commissioner Lett. Yeah, I. Um, this is just for everybody's consideration. Once it warms up up north, which will be sometime after July 4th, um, I would like to plan another party. And uh, one of the things that I'm thinking about uh, is they're going to have the Traverse City Film Festival this year again, uh, starting again. So uh, that would be an opportune time if uh, people would be interested in coming up and look, uh, participating in the film festival and having a little soiree uh, back at my house. So just give us some thought and uh, you know, let me know one way or another, and, and we'll go from there. That's it. Thank you, Commissioner Lett. All right, now it's my turn. Um, and I was meaning to do this for a while now, but uh, during public comment today, there has been, there was a vast and utter inappropriate comment made. I'm sorry, I'm going to try and hold myself together here, but um, if you know anyone who is contemplating suicide, please call 911. And if you are, or if you or anyone in the public watching need assistance, know that you're not alone and contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. With all the agenda items being complete and the commission having no further business, a motion to adjourn is in order. May I please have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion made by Commissioner Lett, seconded by Commissioner Weiss. Any discussion or debate on the motion? All right. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 All opposed, raise your hand and say nay. Motion carries unanimously, and the meeting is adjourned at 11.11 a.m. Thank you very much. Thank you.